And it's also a way to just share with each of you like what what I value. Um, I think too often we go too fast in the world and we don't take these moments to really see things. Navajo artist and our colleague from the University of Colorado, Professor Melanie Yazzie. Um, and in conjunction with her visit, I just want to remind you that the exhibit uh, Mapping Home, Collecting Truths, works by indigenous and international artists, an exhibition organized by Melanie with prints by 35 indigenous and international artists addressing issues of homeland and its intersection with the environment, climate, and other influences is on view in the Printmaking Showcase Gallery on the second floor of this building and will be up until the end of October. Um, and this past week, since Monday, Melanie's been working with our students and faculty on a collaborative print project in our print shop on nearly 200 different sheets of paper, many of which are variable prints related to the topic of mapping and land use, which are centered on our own region here in East Tennessee. Melanie's visit is supported by the Haynes Morris Endowment in the UT College of Arts and Sciences, the UT School of Art Programming Committee, and the Betsy Worden Printmaking Endowment. Melanie's reach as an artist and educator is vast and incredibly impactful. She draws from a rich Diné, Navajo culture, and family history to create prints, sculptures, paintings, mixed media works that speak to the heart of the Diné dictum, walk in beauty. As a true warrior of change and education, she works tirelessly to open dialogues between indigenous peoples all over the world, from the Pueblos of the American Southwest, to New Zealand, to the indigenous peoples of Russia, sharing stories, histories, songs, and survival. She works to educate us on the realities and struggles still faced by indigenous people today. She's known in the printmaking community for the curation and collation of print exchanges, giving hundreds of artists a space to share their work, their voice, and their history with the greater population. Among her vast achievements, she has more than 100 group and solo shows. Her work has been displayed all over the world, from the Denver Art Museum to solo shows in Hastings, New Zealand, to Helsinki, to the Canary Islands, and all over the United States. Her work is in permanent collections in the Philippine Art Museum, the Australian National Gallery and Museum of Art, and Rhode Island School of Design print collection in Providence. She has been reviewed in Focus Magazine Santa Fe, the Los Angeles Times, New Zealand Herald, and she is mentioned in Printmaking in the Sun by Dan Whedon and Paul Muir, Native American Art in the 12th, 20th Century by W. Jackson Rushing III, The Lore of a Local Sense of Place in Multi-Centered Society by Lucy Lippert. As a professor and head of printmaking at the University of Colorado Boulder, she continues the spirit of positive change by promoting personal reflection and artistic growth instilling confidence and respect for printmaking in all of her students. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I want to thank everybody for helping me this week. It's taken a printmaking army to get the work done that I came to do. And I want to thank the native people of this area for um, welcome, welcoming me to their community. I am of the Saltwater Clan, born for the Bitterwater Clan. My maternal grandfather's clan is Edgewater. My paternal grandfather's clan is Red Streak Into the Water. In this way, I am a Navajo woman, and Diné is what grounds me in, in this world. Walking slowly is part of my practice and ritual. I get up and I just go out and I try to look at all the little things. And a lot of times I have artists ask, like, where does your work, um, like, what inspires you? And I tell them these walks. It's all these everyday images. Just a little glance of something will show up and that memory will be in my work. And I'll think of those things when I'm cutting my stencils and when I'm making a piece. So I do a lot of work. Um, I do screen printing and I, I love doing a lot of low tech print methods. So I work a lot with drawing fluid and screen filler. Um, I do paintings and I think this week you guys can see that I just like create and people, a lot of times people say, wow, you must have prepped a lot to do this. And I said, no, I'm just always making work. When I work on my paintings, I'm not just working on one. I have like 15 or 20 that I'm working and I, I have them like floor to ceiling 
well, as far as I can reach to the ceiling. <laughs> I'm really short, so. <laughs> but I, I spend a lot of time just, just in my studio making things, and I'm layering things. So, so that's the power of printmaking and just the art community. You all work together, talk with each other. These are some of some examples of the monotypes that I make. I'm usually working on, I think here we worked on Lexan, and I roll, roll out um, large areas of color, and then I'm working with Mylar, Durlar stencils on the surface, and then building up each time printing off of the ghosts and then not cleaning the plate, but just reversing things and moving the image around on the plate. Um, this is a method that I learned from Jules Heller when I was in undergrad school. And meditate on beautiful, good things. And I drew circles to say nothing's going to be growing inside. And I thought positive, and I just thought, if this is it, I'm just going to see the world and, and concentrate on my walks and seeing things in a good way. And the doctor said, well, that keep doing that, thinking about womanhood, about different levels of womanhood. Um, they're also, when I'm traveling, I'm almost doing self-portraits, so some of those symbols come in. There are flower images that look like um, the reproductive parts of women, and so that comes into to the work. Um, and it's repeated because in each location that I'm at, the I'm responding to the colors of the place. The, um, for example, here, um, as soon as I came, uh, beautiful Bove took me to the mound on campus, and um, we got to see all the native plants. And immediately, the images from those plants started, I started thinking how I was going to use those in the prints. And when I travel, I try to make time to always um, meet with young people. A lot of times I'll um, request to do a project with an elementary school or um, just younger ones. Because I think a lot of times within our society, um, we, I guess as a person of color, I'm always thinking of how I can change stereotypes. And I think if I'm meeting people really young and showing them what a real Native American looks like, that it really dispels that idea that is in cartoons or out in um, just the world. And so if I'm meeting with a group of young people and they see me as a Native person and hear my stories, then their perception from that, for, that time forward, they're able to educate other people and say, no, I met a real Native American person. They don't walk around in feathers. They, they're like this. She was like this. And so it's a first person experience. Well, beautiful people who have really wonderful, tender hearts. But they do not, and I say they, but also me. I had to learn how to fight to get these exhibitions and do this stuff. And it's really hard. So at a certain point, the really treasured ones sort of give up and are like, it's not for me. I just can't do it. So I thought, with the exchanges, if I'm doing this work, that's helping them be seen, all of you, and trying to see your beauty and tell you, keep going, keep going. And when you start to learn how to do these print exchanges and learn how to have exhibits together, then you're not just alone. You're, you're with your family. And it's easier to get these exhibits and projects happening because it, um, it takes those exhibitions to compete for these jobs. And we need people of color. We need the quiet, special ones. Um, because academia, for years, have had people who stomp on our hearts and souls. Um, I went through a lot of it when I was um, in school, and I want a better world for us. So that, so when people say to me, how can you do 10 or 15 or 20 um, exchanges a year, it's to give hope to our community. And it's slow. It's a slow process. It's not seen immediately, but I believe that slowly, that's how we make change. It's just step by step every day. Thanks for that question. Yes. Thank you, everybody.